In the uh, 1990s, this machine was the gold standard for spectrum analyzers. Um, everybody kind of pointed to this one as, as the spectrum analyzer and its, its brothers and sisters. Uh, this is the uh, 1.8 gigahertz version, but there's a 26 gigahertz version and other, other, other versions. But this, this style of spectrum analyzer in its, in its series, they were the gold standard. And uh, uh, these days you can get spectrum analyzers inexpensively. The, the uh, tiny, tiny SA Ultra is a great instrument if you're on a limited budget. Um, I recommend that for anybody starting out, for anybody in school. Uh, get, yeah, get one of these, it's 120 bucks and it'll teach you all about spectrum analyzers. But I get asked all the time, I wanna have a good spectrum analyzer in the lab, you know? What would you recommend? And, and people are kind of shooting at the $500 mark and stuff like that. Just unfortunately, there's really nothing at that price point. And you have to, you have to step up. So um, I think people know that I'm a Rigel fan for uh, oscilloscopes. But I've always uh, said that um, Signet uh, had the best spectrum analyzers, and that's based off of reviews I've seen online, but I've never actually owned one until now. <laughs> and so, uh, first of all, I need to thank my viewers, my subscribers, my patrons um, to be able to afford something like this. Um, I'll tell you, I got this cheap, but that's a different story. Um, the channel doesn't make a lot of money, um, but in the November, December time frame, the YouTube ad revenues go up about 20%. And um, I've been uh, having more people be patrons and I've been saving up. <laughs> and so um, I'm able to buy one of these and show it off. So I kind of want to get my lab kind of up to modern days. I mean, you know, the for me, the HP analyzer would have been fine forever, um, but uh, I think somebody starting out and for my channel to come up, come up to the, uh, the uh, 2022s, I need some more modern instruments. So this is the Rigel, I mean the uh, Siglent Rigel, sorry, sorry Siglent. <laughs> this is the Siglent SSA 3021X. Now the 3021X takes you to um, 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, there is an option uh, that gets you to 3.2 gigahertz, which is the 3032. Now there is a software upgrade between the two instruments, and so the hardware is the same. It's just um, a matter of getting the code to type in, and then your spectrum analyzer goes to 3.2 gigahertz. And please don't ask me how to do that. Uh, go online, search it. You will find it over on the EEV blog. Uh, there is a way to do that. So. Um, I want to um, do some videos on the uh, usage of spectrum analyzer since now I can do good screen captures. Um, this one has lots of great features. This one has crazy specs. Um, the resolution bandwidth goes down to one hertz. Yes, one hertz. <laughs> and it works great. And it's not so slow either. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, like I said, we can go up to 3.2 gigahertz uh, full sweep, which we're doing now, um, which allows us to do a bunch of measurements on, you know, things like Bluetooth or cell phones and, you know, Wi-Fi, everything on the 2.4 gigahertz range. Uh, this is the right, the right instrument for that. Um, so where do we begin? Should we show it off? First of all, it's got a huge display. Um, which will make photographing it really nice. So it's got a 10 inch display in it. It also has a USB drive so I can do screen captures and I can give you really, really nice stuff. Um, it does not have HDMI output like my Rigel does, but it does have a, 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 a USB output. And there is software that allows you to run the instrument live over the USB bus. I haven't tried that out yet, but maybe I'll be able to do that in the future and give you some, give you some good videos that way. Um, this instrument layout is almost exactly the same as the HP instrument. The way the up down arrow keys are, the frequency span amplitude, um, a lot of the internal workings and stuff is just, I, I think the design team, you know, had one of these old HP analyzers and said, yep, it was good then, it's good now, we'll go ahead and design it that way. Um, there are some extra things that this uh, instrument has that the old guys didn't have. Um, there 
is uh, two modes this has. It has spectrum analyzer mode and it has return loss mode, so you ac actually can uh, display v uh, uh, VSWR. Um, this one has the tracking generator. Now the HPs used to have an option for tracking generators, um, but mine doesn't have that. So this does have a tracking generator, so it's going to be very, very easy to sweep filters and, uh, and things like that. Uh, so the generator also goes up to 3.2 gigahertz. Um, let's see, what else does it have? Uh, has lots of memory, uh, has lots of features. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get something on the screen. I do almost all my RF work with the SMA. So the first thing I do on my uh, equipment is put a, uh, a uh, N connector to SMA adapter on the, uh, on the front of the instrument, and then I'm ready to go with most of my toys. So one of the nice things about this instrument, it's the exact same protection on the input that the Hewlett Packard had. So this has a maximum of plus 30 dBm, so that's one watt, right? Um, so plus 30 dBm, and it has a DC block inside that's good to 50 volts DC. Um, so yeah, it has a very robust protection on the input, uh, which is nice. I hope none of you guys have had the experience of blowing up uh, the input of a spectrum analyzer, um, but it is easy to do unless you have uh, one that has a limiting diode in it. This one has a limiter diode in the front end of it and stuff, um, and it keeps it, keeps it safe. Uh, so yeah, let's put in a signal and uh, take a look. Okay, I'm inputting a one megahertz tone, so let's do a frequency of uh, one megahertz. And uh, there's our tone. We can uh, change our span uh, just like I would on the, um, the HP. So our span is 200 kilohertz now. Uh, here's 100 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz. Our resolution bandwidth is now 300 hertz, 100 hertz, 30 hertz. And you can see that it's still... Uh, let me move it up off the ground there so you can see it go. You can see it's still really, really fast to the 30, 30, uh, uh, 30 hertz um, resolution bandwidth. So uh, let's go ahead and turn on some AM modulation. And you can see that we're actually resolving uh, some modulation there. Let's uh, change the span down even a little bit longer, a little bit uh, narrower. Uh, here we go. Um, and so our resolution bandwidth is now 10 hertz. That's right, 10 hertz. And so each marking here is 100, uh, 100 hertz. So this is a AM modulation at 100 hertz. And you can see that resolving it really, really well. Um, let's change my um, modulation down to something stupid. OK, I've changed my uh, frequency modulation down to 40 hertz. And I'm going to change the span down even farther. And so here we are, we're uh, spanning, uh, we're running now at a three hertz resolution bandwidth. And we've got about a point, point 0.8 second sweep time. And we'll go one more to one hertz resolution. And one hertz resolution is gonna be about a two and a half second sweep time. So that's pretty speedy for a one hertz, uh, <laughs> one hertz resolution bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and speed it up again. So I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with the instrument. Um, I know that uh, this is a very old design. I think it's about six years old now. And so I think that this may be getting to end of life. I, I, I really don't know. Um, so I talked about getting this instrument cheap. And the way that I did it was uh, I've been watching them and uh, noticed that there had been some returns, some Amazon returns. So uh, Siglent sells them on their store in Amazon and Amazon gets the returns. And uh, this instrument was sold for $910. Um, it's a $1,300 instrument. And if you upgrade it to uh, 3.2, it's like a $2,500 instrument, something like that. So. Um, yeah, nine hundred and ten dollars is an awfully good, awfully good deal. Now, I shared that information with somebody else on the channel, and they also bought one at that price point, and theirs had uh, some like burnt capacitor smell to it. So, if you do get one in the used market on eBay, I mean on Amazon, just be careful. I think I would have sent that instrument back um, and looked for another one, but um, this one came in great shape, except 
the packing. It, it, it wasn't in an original box, okay, fine, but it was thrown in a cardboard box with no packing. I swear to God, no packing, just in a bare cardboard box, and it rattled around in there. And so I can testify that Siglent instruments are tough. Because, <laughs> I mean, it was wrapped in plastic, okay, so it didn't have any scuffs on it, but there was no dent, there was no, I mean, it looked perfect. Um, I was shocked. I, I expected, I, once I looked in the box, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to send this back. But it's, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, go, go Siglent. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice. Uh, I think I'll keep this video short. Um, like I said, I think I want to do some in-depth uh, studies on s using the spectrum analyzer. I do, I do have a uh, two-part uh, video on uh, beginning spectrum analyzers, and uh, I'll see if I can remember to put a link down below. So if you've never touched a spectrum analyzer, it kind of goes through all of the different things. And so um, that one is still valid for, for this instrument. Um, but I want to do some more in-depth things about how you make certain measurements, um, what, what is noise, uh, how do you measure uh, noise in bands, um, what does this button here mean, there's a detect button. Uh, very few analyzers have that, the, I've been around, so the modern ones have this nice detect button. And I want to do a video all about positive, negative, sample, normal, averaging. There's lots of different ways to do uh, uh, detecting inside the instrument. It's, a, it's an internal thing to spectrum analyzers. It's something that's it's, it's a lot of times overlooked. Um, and so I'll go ahead and explain that button. Um, yeah, it's got um, uh, zero span, of course. It has uh, AM and FM demodulation. Uh, out to a headphone jack. Um, what else does it have? Uh, like I said, it's got two modes. You can go into spectrum analyzer mode or reflection mode. Reflection mode will will do the math for you. It'll tell you return loss in VSWR. Now this does re require you to have an external bridge or an external uh, uh, coupler, um, but you can use, um, Regal will sell you one, but y you don't need to use theirs. You can, you can, you can use others uh, and there's a calibration procedure for it. It's a lot like using a VNA. You do an open short type of thing. Um, you don't get phase information, but you do get amplitude information with, with, with something like this. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a great instrument, and I think it'll be a, a nice upgrade to the channel and uh, answer some questions.